I have a really nerdy physics shirt from the 1980s and it says, and God said, and then it goes on to put a whole bunch of equations down here. It says that if you take the integral of electric field dotted into area, then you'll get the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. This has to be over some closed surface. And also, if you take the integral over some area of the magnetic field for some closed surface, you get, wait a second, magnetic fields, oh man, if I, uh, if I have an enclosed surface, I can't ever get any magnetic field net coming out of there because I can't have magnetic monopoles. So that's what that statement is saying. And then there's this other integral where if you take the integral of the electric field along some line, as long as it's a closed line, you're gonna form some closed loop. Some people call it an Amperian loop, okay. Then this is going to be the change in flux. Well, of course, it's the opposite of the change in the magnetic flux. I have to call it magnetic flux because I'm going to have another equation down here. And then there's this other equation that says, if you take the integral of the magnetic field dotted along some length, as you're going along that length, then you get this thing, which is like mu naught times epsilon naught times d phi electric over time plus mu naught times i enclosed. And, uh, and my shirt says, and God said, and then it says, and there was light. Arguing, of course, that these four equations, which are Maxwell's equations, are what govern the the, well, the propagation of electromagnetic energy, which is light. So these are Maxwell's equations. It's not fair of him to take all of them as his own because this sucker right here is simply saying that there are no magnetic monopoles in the sense that you can have a positive charge on its own. That's an electric monopole. And a negative charge on its own, that would be an electric monopole also, but uh, you can't have a north pole on its own. In fact, if you continue splitting magnets, then you will get just another smaller magnet, ultimately down to the fundamental level of an electron that has a magnetic dipole characteristic where <clears throat> the electron itself is a small magnet. So, sorry, you just can't get them. And that's that statement right there. This is a lack of symmetry in nature, and some people are really pissed about that. Good luck, though, finding a magnetic monopole, monopole because I don't think they exist. But you just send me a letter if you find one, and uh, we'll work through it together, and that'll be great. Maybe I can share in your Nobel Prize. This is the statement that electric field dotted along some length. Wait a second. This says that a changing flux a magnetic flux that changes induces a voltage. Oh yeah, sure, okay, beautiful. And this says that if I have a current, then I'll get a magnetic field going around in a loop around it. That's also lovely. But what about this term right here? This term, Maxwell was like, shoot, look at this term right here. Maxwell said, this is Faraday's law, and I think that by symmetry, there should be a similar action right here. Of course, by symmetry, there should also be something right there. Ha! Good luck, Maxwell. But he argued that this term must exist by symmetry in the 1800s. Pretty awesome. And he says that this term is critical. And in fact, it is true. If you change your electric flux, then you get a magnetic field as a result. And that's pretty awesome. This thing right here out front, though, is the permi permeability of free space times the permittivity of free space. These are two constants of nature, one having to do with electricity and the other having to do with magnetism. So as soon as Maxwell took all four of these equations, Gauss's law and Ampere's law and this other thing and the, the lack of existence of magnetic monopoles and put them all together and published them. He had encapsulated all of electromagnetism and united them together and he said this thing right here. Now what you guys probably don't recognize, but you will as you get older, is that this thing is actually a wave equation. And it proposes the existence of waves where the speed is, well, this right here is supposed to be one over the speed of that wave square. So if I solve this, I find that the speed of that wave, check this out, if I'm gonna, uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say it's one over the square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. If I plug that into my calculator, go on, try it out, get the numbers for this sucker, 
and try it out, I get 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And Maxwell said, ding, that's a really high speed. And he said, wait a second, this is the speed of a wave that is magnetic fields and electric fields. And you know what he was talking about, right? He said, that must be the speed of light. Now this was long before anybody had said the speed of light had to be the maximum speed in the universe, but he's saying it's as if these oscillating electric and magnetic fields, he postulated the existence of light. What? People have been seeing for thousands of years, but he said light is combinations of electric and magnetic fields interacting in a really beautiful way. That's all I have to say about that.